arithmetic sequences. An arithmetic sequence is an ordered list of numbers in which the difference of consecutive terms is constant. Here I have an ordered list of numbers, and I can see that from the first term to the second, there's a difference of 4. I'm adding 4 each time. 11 plus 4 is 15, and 15 plus 4 is 19. Since there is a common difference, this sequence is arithmetic. My difference is 4. We write a sequence in subscript form. The number of my terms, this is the first term, second, third, fourth, fifth, and so on. These are my values, a sub n. They are my values. We write sequences in subscript form. a sub 1 is equal to 3. a sub 2 is equal to 7. a sub 3 is equal to 11. a sub 4 is equal to 15. And a sub 5 is equal to 19. Let's take a closer look at this sequence. a sub 2 is 7. How did I get that? Well, I started out with 3, and I added 4 one time. 3 plus 4 is 7. Now let's look at a sub 3. Well, I started out with 3, and then I added 4 two times. So I started out with 3, and then I added 4 twice. So 4 times 2. That's 8, 9, 10, 11. a sub 4 I started out with 3 plus 4 times 3. 1, 2, 3, there's 3 4s, plus I started out with my 3. a sub 5 is equal to 3 plus, this time, 4 times 4. If we look at this, we can see that these are our values, which we said above is a sub n. We start out, this is a sub 1, plus, then we have our difference, and look, if I'm looking for a sub 5, my number is 5, but here, what do I wind up with? It's really 1 less, so I would take my number and subtract it from 1 each time. And this is the explicit formula for an arithmetic sequence. Look at the formula that we derived from the previous example. This is the explicit formula. The explicit formula of an arithmetic sequence can be used to calculate any term in the sequence. a sub n, we said that that was the value of the term. a sub 1, it is the first term. d is the common difference. And n is the number of the term. Let's use this formula to work some problems. Example 2. In an arithmetic sequence, a sub 3 is equal to 11. a sub 12 is equal to 56. Find a sub 18. We're going to use our explicit formula. a sub n is equal to a sub 1 plus d times n minus 1. We need a sub 1 and we need d. We have neither of those. But a sub n, in this case I'm looking for a sub 3 is equal to a sub 1 plus d times n, and my number is 3 minus 1. So we can see that I'm looking for the third term in the sequence. a sub 3, I do know, is 11, is equal to a sub 1 plus, and then I have 3 minus 1 gives me 2d. Well, in this situation, I can see that I have two variables, 
So I need to saw for one of them. I'm going to saw for a sub one. So I'm going to leave a sub one on this side. And I would have 11. I would subtract 2d from both sides. So 11 minus 2d would give me a sub one. Now let's do the same with a sub 12 is equal to 56. a sub n is equal to a sub 1 plus d times n minus 1. a sub n, well we're looking for a sub 12, is equal to a sub 1 plus d times, and I know I've got 12 minus 1, substituting 12 in for n. a sub 12, I know that its value is 56 is equal to a sub 1 plus, this is going to be 12 minus 1 times d, which will give me 11d. I want to solve for a sub 1. So I have 56. I'm going to subtract 11d from both sides. Is equal to a sub 1. Now since we solved both for a sub 1, then I know that these are equal. I'm going to set them equal. 11 minus 2d is equal to 56 minus 11d. I'm going to get my variables on one side and my numbers on the other. I'm going to add 11d to both sides. I wind up with 11 plus 9d is equal to 56. Then I'm going to subtract 11 from both sides. And I wind up with 9d is equal to 45. Then I will divide by 9 on both sides, and d then is equal to 5. So now I do have my common difference. So I'm going to write it up here. My common difference is 5. What we're going to do is solve for uh, a sub 1. Remember that we are still looking for a sub 18. And we need a sub 1 to get the explicit formula so that we can solve for any number in the sequence. I could pick any equation to solve for a sub 1. And I think I'm just going to pick this one. 11 minus 2d is equal to a sub 1. 11 minus 2, and we just found out that d is 5, is equal to a sub 1. 11 minus 10 is equal to a sub 1. Well, that makes it pretty easy. a sub 1 is equal to 1. And I'm just going to scoot this up and write 1. Now, since I have my first term, a sub 1, and my common difference, I can figure out what my explicit formula is. My explicit formula is a sub n is equal to a sub 1 plus d times n minus 1. a sub n is equal to, and a sub 1 we said is 1, plus the common difference is 5 times n minus 1. a sub n is equal to, this is 1, I'm going to distribute. That gives me 5n minus 5. a sub n is equal to 5n minus 4. So here we have the explicit formula. You might want to go ahead and label these so that you can keep all these equations straight. This is the explicit form. OK, now since I have the explicit form, I'm going to finally get to my answer. Find a sub 18 a sub 18 is what I want, is equal to 5n minus 4. a sub 18 is equal to 5 times 18 minus 4. 5 times 18 is 90, and 90 minus 4 gives me 86. Example 3. Find x such that x minus 1 2x minus 3 and x plus 5 are consecutive terms of an arithmetic sequence. And then it asks us, what are the three consecutive terms? I have x minus 1. 
I have 2x minus 3, and I have x plus 5. If this is an arithmetic sequence, and these are our consecutive terms, what I do know by definition is that the common difference must be the same. Let's look and see what the common difference could be. If I'm going from this term to this term, I know that I have to add an x. x plus x would give me 2x. And then from negative 1 to a negative 3, I would have to subtract 2. Because negative 1 minus 2 would give me a negative 3. Now let's look at the other one. To go from 2x to x, I would need to subtract x. 2x minus x would give me 1x. Then from a negative 3 to a positive 5, negative 3 plus, it would have to be 8, would give me 5. Here's my common difference. They're equal to each other. x minus 2 is equal to a negative x plus 8. Add 2 to both sides. I wind up with x is equal to a negative x plus 10. Add x to both sides. 2x is equal to 10, and x is equal to 5. Now let's answer the next question. What are the three consecutive terms? I'm going to substitute 5 in for each x. 5 minus 1 is 4. 2 times 5 is 10, minus 3 is 7, and 5 plus 5 is 10. We can see that from 4 to 7, I added 3, and from 7 to 10, I added 3. These are the three consecutive terms in this sequence. Let's work an application problem. Lisa plans to run the Beach to Bay Relay Marathon in Corpus Christi. She plans to run the full 26.2 miles solo. There are only 30 days for her to train before the marathon. She plans to run three miles the first day, and she plans to increase her distance by a constant rate of change each day. By what constant rate must she increase her distance each day to run the distance of the marathon. Constant rate, well, what we're looking for is, we're looking for the common difference. D is equal to what? This is an arithmetic sequence. We're going to use the explicit formula. A sub n is equal to A sub 1 plus D times n minus 1. A sub n, we know that she's doing it in 30 days, so it's going to be a sub 30 is equal to, and the first day she's going to run three miles. Plus, we're looking for our constant rate of change, what she needs to do every day after that initial day, times n, and I know that n is 30, minus 1. A sub 30 is equal to 3 plus 29d. And a sub 30, I do know what that is. a sub 30 is 26.2. So 26.2 is equal to 3 plus 29d. If I subtract 3 from both sides, I get 23.2 is equal to 29d. Then I would divide by 29 on both sides. D then is equal to 0 0.8. Lisa would have to increase by 8 tenths of a mile each day after the first day to be able to run the distance of the marathon before she actually does it.